Hello and welcome to this video by Medic Mind, where today we're looking at the 2020 paper and the final question from the BMAT section 3. The question reads, there are now many different kinds of internet sites and apps offering medical advice, but they all share one thing in common, they do more harm than good. Explain what the statement means, argue roughly to the contrary, and to what extent ultimately do we agree? So first of all, let's dig into explaining the reasoning behind the statement. In other words, where this statement might work. You could say that sites do more harm than good because they draw attention to dangerous and potentially rare conditions rather than highlighting what is most common or frequent. And as a result, they don't apply to the majority of people that are viewing them. As a result, that can cause stress to patients who then maybe overinterpret their symptoms and decide that they might have some inoperable form of cancer rather than maybe a simple headache. You could also argue that sites and apps can be dangerous and sort of do more harm than good because sometimes sites can be linked to private individuals offering private services and therefore they may offer malicious information or maybe misleading information in order to create business for those private individuals. You could also argue that there are issues about privacy and the sharing of data on sites and apps, for example, various forms of cookies and entering perhaps potentially confidential medical information. Therefore, all of these sites and apps pose a large uh, information threat, and that's why we have to be so tight on GDPR regulations. And finally, another way that sites and apps can be dangerous, and why this statement might be sitting in front of us, is because reviews about medical services, like hospitals, are now much more common on the internet. And that can undermine trust in a lot of these institutions, because you only need a few negative results before someone starts to sort of doubt where they're going for their medical treatment. As a result, that can undermine the doctor-patient relationship and get in the way of that clinical decision-making process, which is ultimately a partnership between the doctor and the patient. So now let's start to argue to the contrary. Well, in some ways you could say that online sources do more good than harm, because essentially they provide patients with some valuable information, which helps them present earlier to physicians. For example, information about how to conduct breast exams on yourself or for men testicular exams on yourself helps people to catch cancer earlier and therefore present at earlier points in time when they're more likely to be able to be treated. It also can provide the groundwork for many meaningful discussions. For example, a new mother caring for her firstborn child might come across the idea of gastric colic on the internet. And that primes the discussion because it provides the basic information in order to better understand what the doctors are saying around her. As a result, that can help fill in the gaps a lot more quickly in terms of knowledge and caring for that infant, and therefore provides better patient outcomes and better understanding from everyone involved. And it's also useful more generally if you think about the supplier side, almost like the medical students and the junior doctors using these sites. Often patient-centered sites and apps and medical services are very useful learning resources because they often come in at a basic level that helps capture the bigger picture. Therefore, these online sources of information are really good for medical students to pick up on because they lay the foundations for more detailed book work later. Therefore, they do more good than harm because essentially there are different people using it and it helps to sort of build up the knowledge base of many of those junior professionals just coming into a speciality. So now that we've discussed all of the sort of pros and cons of medical apps and websites and advice services, now let's think about to what extent do we agree? And for this last part of the essay, we want to think about practical compromises that could be made or procedures and sort of things that could be put in place in order to limit the negatives and maximise the positives. And the first thing that we can say is that internet and sites and apps in general can be very beneficial. However, in order to be beneficial, they need to provide realistic information with warnings in order to prevent over-interpretation. And that helps to counteract that sort of negative effect of patients over-reading what they have online and thinking that they suddenly have some sort of brain tumour. If the information was realistic, was weighted according to what the population has in general, and also provided warning for over-interpretation, that's when that information becomes really useful. And you can see that in process and active in the NHS website. Always it tries to suggest common things, but provides warning for those rarer things and when to see your doctor without providing excessive information. 
You could also argue that in order to protect against the stress that patients have when they're reading things and getting too much information, knowledge and sites should be structured in a way that allows different professionals to use them differently. For example, the information that a patient receives might be subtly different to the information that a med student receives, which might be subtly different to that which the consultant achieves. So ultimately, these sites and apps and medical services can be very useful, but as long as they segment and target their audience in different ways and provide different levels of information as is required by that demographic. And finally, you can say that even though these things do have their negatives, actually, if they're used in the right way, they can be very effective. And a good example of that would be where Maybe a patient comes in having read the NHS website a little bit about their condition. They then see the doctor who then points them in the direction to relevant and reliable further specific information about their condition. In that way, the doctor is able to guide the patient a bit more and provide relevant and timely advice rather than the patient simply navigating this terrain on their own. So that doctor patient relationship can become very useful in terms of accessing these medical apps and Internet services. So hopefully that was useful. Ultimately, my own opinion of this is that medical internet services can do a lot more good than harm. But it is those sort of negotiating factors, those limiting factors that we've just talked through that make the difference. And that last one about doctors signposting patients in the right direction is really important. So hopefully that was useful and I would really bring that out in your essay. Thank you. And that concludes all of the essays that we're going to be talking through here at MedicMind. I hope you found them useful. And if you want, go back through these videos and try and plan your own essays, weaving in some of our points along the way. It's really helpful to take a second look sometimes at an essay in order to really perfect it before the exam. Thank you very much. And I'll see you again next time. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and share it with your friends so that they don't miss anything out on the journey into medical school. To unlock the rest of the series, which is 70 videos, including live walkthroughs and over a thousand different questions, just click the link in the description below.